Okay, back with another top 10 list. This time I am going with tight ends. That's right, top 10 tight ends. And I probably should mention, I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to how well do you uh, receive than I think other people would. I think a lot of people care sort of about both the blocking and the receiving equally. I put a lot more emphasis on how well do you receive because I think that's the more important thing of a tight end. I take into account how well do you block. That matters to me. Receiving matters more to me. So uh, that's what I'm doing. Also, I should mention because, you know, age might come up with a couple of these guys. The way that I focus on this is simply who would I want for next season? It is a right now list. It is not a who would I want for the future? It is not a potential list. So that's what I have. A uh, few few honorable mentions. There's Jonu Smith, who, you know, the New England Patriots just gave a big payday to. So clearly he's doing something, right? They don't just pay guys uh, willy-nilly, although they kind of did this year a little. But, you know, I think they got good players back. Uh, Logan Thomas, who had over 600 receiving yards last year. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Also, Austin Hooper, who maybe wasn't exactly what Cleveland had hoped for when they signed him, but it's still good. Uh, still a very talented player. And also, I have O.J. Howard here. Uh, this is kind of maybe a bit of a sleeper pick. I think O.J. Howard could have a breakout season next year. He was connecting really well with Brady before he got injured, so he's struggled to stay on the field, but he can be good when healthy, so... I can't really justify putting him, putting him on the list, but he makes one of the four honorable mention spots, and those are in no particular order. Let's get into what will be in particular particular order, which is my top 10 list, starting with number 10. I'm going with Robert Tunyon right here. Green Bay Packers, you know, had a breakout season last year. The, the yardage isn't crazy, 586 yards. That's good, uh, but what really decided, what really made me decide to put him and over the other guys I listed was the 11 touchdowns, which was tied for first. Seems like him and Aaron Rodgers do have a pretty good connection. Probably should have been a pro bowler last year over Evan Ingram, who didn't even make my honorable mentions. Although I do think is a bit uh, underrated. I think he gets a bit too much criticism. He's overrated by people that don't really know football. And he, I think he's a little bit underrated by people who do really know football. Uh, that's just kind of, you know, he's one of those weird things. Uh, but yeah, uh, I like Robert Tunyon. I'm not sure why I got onto Evan Ingram. Oh, right, because the Pro Bowl thing. Uh, Robert Tunyon is good. I mean, I, I, you know, if he's, I want to see it a little bit more before I can put him higher because it's only been one year, but I do have him there. Number nine, I'm going with Gronk right here. Rob Gronkowski. Uh, you know, funny with Gronk is that he had over 600 receiving yards last year, kind of under the radar, especially when you consider that he wasn't even the starting uh, tight end for them starting the season. It was OJ Howard before he got hurt. Split time, right, is seen as more of the receiving guy, but Gronkowski was a good receiving threat. Obviously, a lot of that is just the connection that he and Brady has, uh, and I think that his, again, uh, I don't pay as much attention to blocking as others, but his blocking is still up there with the best in the league, so uh, that's why I have him here at nine. Number eight, I'm going Dallas Goddard. Uh, Dallas Goddard is, he is one of those guys who is kind of an all-around, can-do-it-all tight end, I feel like. And another, another thing that he does well is he does catch the ball well. He does run routes well. 524 yards isn't crazy, uh, but also it's it's good. And you have to keep in mind that, you know, just the team he was playing for. Playing in Philadelphia, that's a, that's a, a it's, it's not a, tough team always, but it was a tough team last year because they just, they had no receiving help. Uh, what are you going to do if you're Goddard? There's not much you can do. And also one last point about Dallas Goddard. I mentioned the numbers weren't crazy high. Part of that as well was he missed about four or five games due to injury. So obviously you can't get the bulk stats if you're not playing a bulk amount of games. So, uh, you know, that makes the number look a lot better actually once you put it in full context. So, uh, bump my microphone for a second, but that's why you can't just use, you know, bulk stats like that. It, there's plenty of reasons, but that's one of them. Number seven, Noah Fant right here. Fant is really good. Uh, again, he's someone who can move very well. Uh, and I think that he's someone we're going to see continue to get better. Young tight ends do tend to grow. So uh, 673 yards for Fant. I think that he's, he's, I think he's really good. I do. Number six, Mike Gusecki. Uh, again, a team that didn't have a ton of receiving help around him, but he was able to really thrive with over 700 receiving yards last year. So uh, Mike Gusecki is, uh, you know, great. He had that big catch week 17 against the New England Patriots. That was the Fitzmagic game. So uh, I think he's good, and he should be one of the many targets that 
Tua has next year because they, you know, they got all those wide receivers. Well, he's another person that helps in that role. So uh, he's not quite a top five tight end, but to me, I do have him at number six. I, I, I think I'm a bit higher on him than other people would be. Number five, I do have Mark Andrews. I almost said six. It is number five. Uh, number five here. I, I'm going with Mark Andrews. I do think there's a big jump between six and five, even though Andrews actually had less receiving yards than Gusecki did. I think he's much better, and you have to factor in, uh, you know, Gusecki wasn't in a great situation at times in Miami. Mark Andrews was in a horrible situation in Baltimore where – he was the number one option and like not he was probably their best option he was like the only guy they could throw to and have some consistency uh you know i made a whole video on the you know horrors that lamar jackson had to deal with with his receiving core uh mark andrews was also in that boat and you know he did have 852 yards last year so uh, i think i think he's a little bit underrated i think he'll be better than people realize he is in this elite tier this top five but i do have him at five number four i'm going tj hawkinson hawkinson with uh 723 yards last year he's a he's a good player and he's continuing to improve the one thing you can maybe say is uh, a lot of his yards came in like zone buster type plays but that's what being a tight end is, is you get a lot of yards that way. He can block, he can pass catch really well. Uh, so all of that stuff is is incredible. He, to me, he is uh, in this elite tier. He is number four, in my opinion. Number three, I have Darren Waller. You know, I mean, listen, if I'm going to sit here and say I value tight ends more than the average person does, well, then I got to go with someone like Darren Waller in my top three. He's had over a thousand yards in back-to-back -back seasons. And again, if there's a jump up from six to five, I think there's another jump up from four to three and probably even another jump up from three to two and, you know, uh, two and one are close together. But Waller's really awesome. His blocking isn't the best. It's not. Uh, but you know what? They don't pay him to block. They pay him to catch. That's what his role is. He, you know, his blocking's okay. His blocking's not great. It's just not. For a tight end, it's not very good. But he you know, more than makes up for it with how good he can pass catch. Number two, I have George Kittle. That's right. And crazy to think that George Kittle is still only number two in my book. He is coming off of an injury, but prior to that, he had over a thousand yards at 1,053 in 2019. And he had uh, 1,377 yards the year before, which if I'm remembering correctly, uh, I believe that either was like, would have been the record if like Travis Kelsey has the record, but Kittle's number two. So uh, he's a guy who can pass catch well, and don't forget about his blocking. He's a monster blocker. And if you're someone who values blocking more than I do, you probably would have him at number one and Kelsey at number two. But, uh, you know, I have him at number two because I do value pass catching a little bit more, but he's awesome at that too. So uh, you could argue him number one. Uh, I did go back and forth on these two guys a little bit, but ended up uh, going with the other guy. And that is Travis Kelsey at number one. Listen, if I value receiving more than blocking, well, how do I not go with probably the best receiving, just pure receiving tight end to ever play? The guy had 1,416 yards last season. That's a career year for like fringe Hall of Fame wide receivers. And he's doing that out of the tight end position. The guy's a monster. He's probably the best receiving tight end we've ever seen. Uh, so he's number one for me. Uh, Yes, he is getting up there. I think he'll still be effective next year. And, you know, it's so unfair with Kansas City to get him and Tyreek Hill. It's so unfair they get two of those guys that are just completely unguardable. Uh, he could kill you in zone, as we all know. But he's also underrated in man as well. So, uh, you know, not much of a blocker. Again, they don't pay him to do that. They pay him to receive, and he does that. And he, he can block okay. He's not. I think he's, he's a step up from Waller. I'm not going to say he's George Kittle, but he can do it. So... Travis Kelsey, number one. That's my list. What is yours? Let me know in the comments below. Where am I wrong? What am I stupid about? Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.